Hey guys, it's Stephen Gates here from MyPLCTraining.com with another PLC training video to help you become a confident PLC programmer. Uh, today's video is cool because you're going to learn exactly how to set up communications between two ControlLogix PLCs, technically two emulator uh, Logix PLCs, but you'll learn the, the basis of how to do it with ControlLogix. And if you have access to Studio 5000 Logix Designer and Logix Emulate, you'll actually be able to set it all up and test it out today. So um, that's going to be pretty cool. By the way, if you do not have access to Studio 5000 Logix Designer and Logix Emulate, but you're serious about learning PLCs, then you should get access to those two software packages. Now, if you know anything about Rockwell software, you know it is outrageously expensive if you're just trying to learn. Makes sense for companies that are doing uh, automation integration, but if you're just trying to learn, plunking down several thousand dollars for software is out of the question. So, what you need to know is that my PLC Training Academy, our membership site uh, for PLC training, actually has um, access to our own Rockwell software licenses included with the membership. So um, I'm not going to explain to you exactly how all that works, but this is absolutely the best PLC training offer on the internet right now. Um, the training itself is extremely valuable and methodical and takes you from point A to point B, but to pair that with access to Rockwell software is just unbelievable. So definitely check out my PLC Training Academy and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so back to the topic at hand. Here we are in Studio 5000, <clears throat> Logics Designer, and we are going to start by adding a rung. Add the rung. And next, we're going to go to the Input Output tab here. And that's where we have an MSG instruction. So MSG stands for message. And what we're going to do, again, is set up communications between uh, two PLCs. And this is, in our example, we're going to set it up between two control, uh, I'm sorry, emulate PLCs. So here's my beautiful picture again. PLC1 talking to PLC2 through an Ethernet IP network. And in this case these are meant to look like control objects PLCs, but um, in our example we're talking about uh, emulate PLC. So this allows you to run the Logix emulate software on your computer. You don't need the to go buy um, five thousand uh, dollar control logics PLCs and chassis and all that stuff to put on your desk you can just use the emulate software and instead of talking over Ethernet we're actually gonna put them both in the same chassis you'll see what I mean here in a minute and they'll just talk back and forth to each other but the same principles apply um, so we are discussing message instructions. There are other ways to communicate between two PLCs, uh, namely produced and consumed tags, but we're not going to cover this or cover that in this training. Again, if you want more info on that, check out my PLC Training Academy, our training membership. But we will introduce messages. So, and you can do a lot with this, so this is pretty cool. Um, so the next thing we want to do is give this message a tag name. So we're going to call this SIP CIP MSG, or actually we'll call it read MSG, and then control W to create a new data type message um, tag. And then we open the configuration dialog to con continue setting this up. So there's a lot of stuff here, but uh, the first thing we need to think about is the message type. So there's a whole bunch, bunch of different types here. We're going to focus on two types in this video, but just to give you an idea, there are different types of instructions or message types, I should say, for talking to different types of devices or across different networks. 
So for example, there's a PLC5 typed read and write instructions for communicating to PLC5s. And there's even PLC2 and 3, which are really, really old PLCs. And SLC typed and so on. So a lot of things there. Um, for the most part, you probably will never use most of these. The most important ones are SIP data table read and SIP data table write. And we're going to focus on the read, but the write is, is very similar, just the data is going in a different direction. So you'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, so we are going to go through this whole setup for talking between two different emulate controllers. But everything except for the communication path would be the same for talking between two control objects controllers. So if you want more details on setting up messages between control objects or compact logic controllers, then you can check out the free bonus lesson coming up, which I will be um, adding more info about soon in the description box below this video. Um, or in the blog post that this video will be associated with. Okay, and again, um, in addition to that bonus lesson, you can always join my PLC Training Academy and get access to that type of training right away. Okay, lots of plugs for my PLC Training Academy today because there's just so much value there and I can't cover all of that in this short lesson. So, this message is going to be a read message as you can see in the name we gave the message instruction um, so I've chosen SIP data table read so this source element is the element that we're reading from the device that is the source and the destination would be where we're placing that data so just to clarify, using my super fancy drawing again, we're in PLC1, and we're going to talk through this uh, network to PLC2. And our network's going to be a little bit different because they're both going to be in the same chassis, but this is PLC1, and we're going to talk to PLC1 or PLC2. So the source element is actually going to be PLC2 because that's where we're getting the data from. And we're going to call this produce data. So this is a tag that lives in PLC2. And I'll just pull up that program real quick. So I have this element, this array of tags um, called produce data in PLC2. And it's an array of 20 dints. Okay, so that's what we want to read. And we're actually just going to read 10 of those 20 dints. And we're going to place it in a tag called consume data. And we're going to start this at element 0 of the array. And it's going to go into element 0 of this array. Now we have a handy little feature here called new tag. So if this tag in our controller is going to be a new tag, and we click new tag. By the way, if we were doing a SIP data table write, the new tag would be there because the source element would be in the PLC uh, that we're working with. So you're taking the data from this PLC and writing it to the other PLC. So we'd be creating a new tag in this controller for the source element. But since we're doing a, a read, the new tag will be associated with the destination because that's where we're we're getting the data from the, the other controller and we're placing it in the destination, which is the tags within our own controller. Okay, so don't be confused. Okay, consume data is what we're going to call this tag array. So click new tag. And then we're going to make this an array of 20. Okay, invalid name, tag name, that's okay. So you just need to get rid of that zero there. And then we can still address that element here. So we'll click apply. And it's okay with that, but it, it wants us to set up our communications. So 
So we'll click OK and we'll go to the communication tab. So you can see here in the I.O. configuration we have our main PLC, PLC1, it's in slot 0. And then we have PLC2 in slot 1, which I've added two controllers to our Logix Emulate software. As you can see, you can create controllers on the fly there. And that's what I've done. I'll just exit out of that. So this is going to be our PLC1. This is our PLC2. I've actually downloaded this project to them before already. So I'll just minimize that. And since I set up PLC2 in our I.O. configuration tree, we can click the Browse button and click um, in our I.O. configuration tree, Browse directly to PLC2. So click the Emulate 5570 there, PLC2. Now one more thing before we test our message instruction. So we'll click OK. Now the way a message instruction works is that um, when the rung is true, the message instruction executes once. So um, as soon as we put this in run mode, this instruction would execute once, we'd read the data once, and then we'd be done. So if the data in PLC2 changed after that, we wouldn't see it. So what we want to do is set it up so that this rung keeps going from false to true, false to true, so that we can get this to continually execute. So the easiest way to do that, and this works almost always unless you have a really big program and maybe some task timing issues that you need to deal with. All you have to do is do a sip read message dot en, which is the enable bit of this message instruction, and that will continually toggle the rung and continually execute that message instruction. So I'm going to download this project to the controller, which is here. I'm going to download to this guy. And then I'm going to take our PLC2 project and download to this guy. So I'll start that process. And for the sake of time, I will get back to you when it's downloaded. OK, and our programs have downloaded. And I've got both the controllers in run mode. So let's just tile these side by side so we can see what's going on. So you can see our message instruction, the EN bit is toggling on and off, and the done bit is staying on. Basically, that means it's every time it's running, it's going done, which is good. Um, if you see your ER bit going true instead of the done bit, that means you're getting an error. And you may need to um, check your tag names. So you could have a typo in this tag, perhaps, or something wrong with your communication there, um, or possibly more elements than your tag supports, so on, things like that. So check those. And there will be an error text there, and you can actually look up that error text with the Help menu um, if you need to. But those are some quick things to check for as typos, mostly. OK, so it's working. So as you can see, I've got some numbers here in my array. So let's go to our controller tags and open up our consumed data and compare it side by side. So again, we're reading the data from PLC2 and placing it here in PLC1 in the consumed data tag array. And you can see that element 0 corresponds to element 0. We've got it at 1. So let's change it live and see what happens. Sure enough, it updated over here to 2. And we've got in element number 6, we've got 3. That's the same over here. We're going to update it here to 5. And it changed here as well. And then one more in element 9, we've got 146. We'll change this to 1,000. And you can see it updated over here. Um, one thing I did want to show you is that this array is 20 
elements long, but we only set up the communication for 10 of those elements. So if I change um, something higher than element 9, which is the 10th element in the array, so if I change 16, for example, to 45, over here 16 does not do anything. Um, so if we did want that to do something, we would go here, open up the MSG, uh, whoops, not 45, 20 elements, click OK, and now if we monitor that tag, it should reflect the reading from produce data because we are now getting all 20 elements. So if I change this to 90, it changes to 90 over here. Okay, that's it for this short PLC training on sending messages between Alan Bradley Rockwell PLC controllers. Hope you found this helpful. Stay tuned for the free bonus lesson uh, that will be linked below and or attached to the blog post that this will be a part of. Um, and that will be on communicating between control logics controllers via Ethernet. So the slight difference is there. And we'll see you in the next video.